Welcome to the Earth Science Major Workshop. Uh, now we're going to talk about careers. And this is the one that shows uh, why we encourage geology as a career. All right? And this is what it shows is the, of the, all the careers, the ones that are least likely to be laid off or to be unemployed are math and geology and rivaled by engineering. And you've all heard about engineers hanging out zero percent unemployment, okay? Um, and math, math people are zero percent unemployment. You can assume it's the same with geology. And another list, which we don't have here, is, but you can look it up. Newsweek did a list of the top ten careers that are least likely to be outsourced. And guess what was in that list? Geology. Most Americans don't even know a geologist, yet it showed up on both those lists. Why? Because it's one of those careers that require so much background. They, they, we have, the society does reward you for having uh, taken a science that was a calculus and chemistry and physics based science. Uh, what kind of salaries can a geologist make? This handout shows the difference of taking a calculus chemistry based major versus one that isn't. When you see geology, assume it means environmental science. It's the, essentially the same thing, same requirements. You can see how the salaries are increase with each degree, and you can see that the average salary for an honest to goodness geologist with at least a master's degree, the salaries average ninety thousand. When you see geology, assume it means environmental science. It's the essentially the same thing, same requirements. You can see how the salaries are increase with each degree, and you can see that the average salary for an honest to goodness geologist with at least a master's degree, the salaries average ninety thousand. So what's that mean? That means more money for you to buy your things, okay? <laughs> but life is much more than materialism, right? You want to experience earth science. Let's say you want to go travel. So you can do like what I do. Go spend your summer vacation in Iceland and Greenland. You can live geology, not just work it. And it's more rewarding. You can leave your money for scholarships, okay, for geologists, okay, so you can help um, uh, promote the field. You can leave the money for your children. It's not just about buying things. And the other thing about it is job security, as we were stressing here. Job security means everything when you have a recession. And it's also prestige. You know, when you're at a, I don't know, a, a party or something and someone introduces you as a geologist, people are like, whoa, I never met a geologist. Um, what do you do? <laughs> you know, and so it's also about prestige. So, and then my favorite thing to talk about a degree is they can never take it away from you. You can lose your money, you can lose your health, you can lose your spouse, you, you can, you know, through divorce. And, but they can never take away your degree. So if you've got a master's degree or a PhD in geology, it's permanent. So you're, you say, look, you decide you don't like your job, change jobs with basically 0% unemployment, making $90,000 a year, just go and change jobs. Um, or here's another thing, like what my cousin did. If you don't like where you live, move to a place you do. He just moved to Denver, because there's a lot of geology jobs in Denver. So that's another reason. You've got to think quality life, not just money, not just things. It's about quality life. And if you're not laid off, and you're living wherever you want to go, and you're going on vacation wherever you want to do, and you have enough money to send your kids to college, well, uh, you know, you, you've got, you've made the good life, basically. But you have to pay your dues. You have to take chemistry, you have to take calculus, you have to get through geology, you have to transfer. <laughs> yeah, and you have to get a grad degree if you want to make that kind of salary. What kind of jobs are there? All right, and the way I view it, there's four big categories. There's education, the one you're, you're familiar with, professors, teachers, there's earth science teachers in high school. There are uh, professors at community colleges where we're hired to teach. And then there's professors at four-year schools where they're hired to research. Okay, so those are basically three huge fields in geology, um, in the education field. 
in education, it varies. If you want to be a research geologist at a big research university like UC whatever, uh, you probably need a PhD. If you like to teach and you want to be a lecturer at a, a state university like Long Beach, a master's degree is okay. If you want to teach at a community college, a master's degree is okay. So you don't need to have a PhD. It just gives you more options. Then there's energy companies. Okay? Um, the big money is in oil and natural gas. And if you have any questions about that, talk to me. I spent 10 years working for an oil company and on offshore oil platforms and things. And so I can fill you in on that. That's big money. However, that industry is really concentrated in Texas and places near Texas, like Louisiana and Oklahoma. So if you want to stay in California, that may not be your field. If you just want to make a lot of money and you don't care where you move, then that may be your field. Okay? It only takes a master's degree. You don't need a PhD in that field. In energy, a PhD doesn't really help that much. Okay, another field, a huge field, is the environmental cleanup. Um, uh, it's also called a, it's the field of hydrology. And you can see on your list, there's more hydrologists than geologists. They are a kind of geology, but that's where the number of jobs are found. Lots and lots of jobs. Why? Because we have a lot of messes in every city. And you can live anywhere you want. You can live in Seattle, you can live in New York, you can live in Miami. And it's under every city, we have leaking oil pipelines, and leaking gas stations, and refineries. And the people who clean up this mess are geologists okay? and environmental science. Right? So that's where that one comes in. Um, so lots and lots of jobs, 10,000 jobs in this field here. The other here include jobs with the USGS, like Robin Baus did, and uh, those often require a PhD. But if you have any questions, ask Robin Baus. She's a member of our department, and she has. Also under other would be mining. Mining is not a big field. But if you are really into those rocks and minerals, this might be your field. And it sounds glorious. You might see it on TV that they go out and they find um, rubies in Greenland or something like that. But it, it's very few people actually have that glorious, glorious, stereotypic mining job. Okay. That is based in places like Reno and southern Arizona where the mining is based. So if you want to get more into the career, and you should, you should encourage, oh, we encourage you to research. One of the things I encourage you to do is go to the Career Center in counseling, and you can do your own research on the computers in the Career Counselor, and just look up geology, and they have all sorts of things. You can go online and do that, too. We want you to know that there's lots of options in geology. It's a great field. And environmental science and geology are basically the same kind of thing. There's great jobs in geography if you decide you can or don't want to do the, the math and the, the chemistry. Um, you can see the salaries here. Um, the problem is the well-paid geography salaries, there's not a lot of them. They tend to be professors and things like that. And there's a lot of, lot of jobs in GIS, lots and lots of jobs. So. Um, if you um, say, I just can only do a bachelor's degree, and I want one that's a uh, guaranteed job, this is not a bad field. There's 80,000 people doing this for a living, including several past uh, graduates of our department. We're hoping that all of you get a graduate degree. That would, uh, why? Because that's where the money is. Okay? And some fields, getting a master's degree doesn't increase your salary more than maybe 10,000 a year. But in the case of geology and environmental science, it increases, it doubles your salary. It goes from like 40,000 a year to 80,000 a year. And it's only an extra two or three years. So we're hoping all of you go to grad school. Right. And your first thing going through your mind is, I can't afford it. I can barely afford this. I'm working and trying to go to school. But what we stress with our students is you don't have to pay for grad school because in sciences, we have an advantage over other fields, like English and, and art. And that is, all universities have TA, teaching assistants and research assistants. 
And these are paid positions, so you make money. Okay, you don't have to work at Starbucks. You can make money doing what you like, which is teaching a lab or, um, or grading papers or something like that. And this is awesome because not only you're paid, but you get free tuition or reduced tuition. And tuition in a, in a four-year university is, is the big expense. So if you can take care of the tuition and then your pay takes care of your rent, it's basically free. So that's what I want to stress with you. And yes, it's an extra two or three years of your life, but you're doubling your income. And if you're talking about doubling your income, you're making an extra 40000 a year, right? At about. Now multiply that times your whole career, right? Let's say you're going to work 30 years. You can see how the math works out. And you're talking like an extra million dollars, $1.2 million, all right? And I think your family would really appreciate that if you made that extra 1.2 million. Because even if you don't want to spend it, you can leave it to your children. You can help your family up, buy a house for your mom, whatever. <laughs> so that's that's the earning potential. Everybody in our department, all the professors, have either a master's degree or a PhD. So, and PhD is even more money. Now it's not that incremental jump of like double, but it, it is substantial. Um, when it may just add another 20000 to that. So if you do the math, crank the money, you'll find that you're making you know, another half a million over the course of your life. So really, really think about grad school. And if you have any questions about, about that, ask people in an apartment. You know, Sarah went to UCLA. I went to Oregon State. Chuck Herzig went to a bunch of universities. <laughs> okay, And um, Robin Baus, uh, got a PhD from yeah. Arizona. But that's another reason to get to know a professor, not just for the selfish reason of, oh, I need a letter of recommendation. The most important thing, which go. is counseling. Hi, my name's Ken Gaines, and I'm one of the counselors in all of the math and medical science area. I just really want to invite you to come to counseling. I think it's a very important aspect of, uh, you know, your college education in terms of helping you identify your goal, whether you have one or not. I assume that most of you are geology uh, type majors because you're part of this club, so that would make a lot of sense. Maybe engineering or something that's related to that. But if you come on in, we can help uh, you identify your major goal, help you understand what classes you need for general education and for your major. Uh, how to accomplish an Associate of Science degree or an Associate of Arts degree, how to complete your Cal State General Ed or your UC General Ed. You know, important aspects about what you're uh, trying to accomplish here at El Camino College. And as a counselor, we can help you in terms of uh, how to combine your classes and get through here in a timely fashion. Probably the biggest uh, issue is, well, what can I actually get into as a student when it's my time to register? So hopefully you're registering early. Perhaps you're part of the uh, Honors Transfer Program or EOPS or some other program that gives you early registration. Uh, but come on in and we can talk about that. I brought a couple of sheets that we have in counseling just to give you a sense of a few of the materials that we offer. I would recommend that you pick up one of the, these fantastic transfer guides that Sue Oda Omori put together. These are terrific. Uh, because there's a lot of information in terms of transfer. It compares the community college with the Cal States and UCs, so you can make a wise choice in terms of where you're going to transfer to. There's information on college terminology, semester system versus quarter systems, uh, how to apply your application timeline, uh, how to use www.assist.org to figure out what courses you need for your major. Um, the IGETSI classes, IGETSI meaning the uh, Intersegmental General Ed Transfer Curriculum if you're transferring to a UC or a Cal State. Or if you know you're going to a Cal State, uh, there's also a list of the Cal State General Ed and the General Ed for USC and more information. So you can just go and pick one up. These are free. Also in counseling, there's a list of the classes that you need. I just brought one for geology, but we have many of these for pretty much any major here at El Camino College, biology, engineering, nursing, whatever. And it lists uh, usually about you know 10 or 15 different transfer schools and what major courses you need to uh, 
complete the transfer requirements. I brought a few of these, so if you're interested, you're welcome to pick this up and take this. Also, I brought one of the sheets that we have. These are, you know, free. What can I do with a major in geology? You've always wanted to know that, right? So you want to know, you know, what area you could work in, who would hire you, and strategies for getting your foot in the door and moving up in a field in geology. So I'll leave this here for you too, but all this material is free. You can come on over to counseling and pick up as many as you like. All right, so uh, have a great semester. And again, please set up an appointment. I would like to introduce you to you my partner, Ken Key, another one of your uh, counselors, one of the finest counselors here. Uh, thank you. Also, also the counselor for the MESA program. Okay, take care. And, and, and as Ken Gaines had mentioned, a lot of this information is online as well. So at the counseling website, the transfer link can take you to a lot of the transfer resources and the transfer guide. Um, the transfer requirements with the geology requirement sheet is all online as well that you can download. And in the Career Center, the What Can I Do With a Major In is on the Career Center website as well. I'm uh, pushing the MESA program, which is in the basement of this building. It's a good program that has um, support, academic support services for workshops in calculus, physics, and chemistry, a lot of other focused workshops, a lot of uh, tutorial, tutorial and academic resources, a multitude of scholarship opportunities for those who are active in the Mesa, Mesa Center and are putting hours into the Mesa Center. You also can compete for the various scholarship programs that they have. And it's a place that also there's counselor access because sometimes Trying to schedule appointments with the general counseling area can somewhat be problematic sometimes, but it's very easy to schedule an appointment in the Mesa Center. And that's, sometimes we feel that's a plus <laughs> for counseling appointments. Um, and also we try to make sure that you fully understand through the educational planning process what requirements you're looking at, the timeline to complete those requirements, because there's an ideal timeline where we don't experience any life complications and we can kind of move forward in the timeline that we established but in reality things that we can never prevent does occur and that sometimes impacts the smoothness of trying to get out of El Camino College in a timely fashion. And for math based majors I know there's a concept called the two year college. There is no longer a two year college if you're in a math based major because your major is going to keep you here anywhere from two and a half to three and a half years because depending upon where you start with your math preparation can determine the length of time that you will be here. So I know a lot of times our parents and other people say you're at a two-year college, you should be out in two years, laugh at them because they don't understand the reality. <laughs> okay, that's all I'm going to say. This is my uh, email address. I don't like people to call me because if you hear my message, it'll say I'll get back to you in three to five days because I'm a flake when it comes to the phone, but on email, I'll get back to you immediately. So I just want you to be aware of that. Okay, I wish you all the best. Good area, you got a good gentleman right here, and his, and his, and his peer faculty members are very um, uh, um, charged up when it comes to geology and earth sciences. Take advantage of them, because they want to really assist you and provide you a lot of information and resources. There now. Majors and geography majors and environmental science majors, we have this guide here. And um, if you don't have one, make sure to get one from me. All right? We've already covered the first two things. The third thing is to join the science club. If you have the time, if you can come to their meetings on Tuesdays in NS 206, the geology room. And the science club goes on two big trips, maybe three a year. And uh, during spring break, we tend to go over to Arizona and Utah National Parks. In the fall, we have a tendency to go to closer ones on our weekend. Uh, so it's just a weekend trip, uh, but it goes to places like Sequoia or the coast or Yosemite. In the summer, the same idea. That we tend to go for a, a, a few day trip and it's been to Yosemite recently. So that's a great way to get to know Places at very low cost, places of geologic interest, places of earth science interest, and in your and the other thing is you have a um, a learning community. You can network with each other, and you'll find one person might know a lot about um, 
erosion. Another person might know a lot about plants, because that's covered in geography. And maybe one professor might be really, really into talking about big pictures, and the other might be really into minerals. Okay. And so by going on multiple trips with different professors, you can do that. And the, the professors that have been leading trips recently are um, myself, Joe Holliday, and Chuck Herzig. The fourth thing we want to talk about is the courses you need to take if you're a geology major or environmental science versus geography. Geography, you could take all those fun courses, and um, but as you can see by the handout on careers, there's a payoff if you're in environmental science or geology. Yes, you have to take chemistry and math, but you can see the salaries are much greater. And so society does reward you with um, money <laughs> if you uh, go through the pain of taking math and chemistry. The chemistry that's required for environmental science and geology is Chem 1A and Chem 1B. And to get there, you have to go through Chem 4. So most of our students are going through that series. My rule of thumb is take chemistry every semester or you're not a serious geology major because that's what holds students up. About half our geology majors are here still because they're, it's taken a long time to get through the chemistry and math sequence. So I really encourage you to do that. Work your way up and don't just take a course based on how convenient it is to your work schedule. Choose your teacher very carefully. Every semester we have problems with um, students not relating to their professor or whatever. So make sure to check out references. It says here, um, try full-time professors, go on, rate my professors, talk to each other. Another good reason to join the science club is talk to each other. <laughs> or come to an earth science major workshop and talk to each other about who are the chemistry teachers and the math teachers that will get you through to your success. The math that you need to work your way up to is calculus. And calculus 190, 191 are, is the ultimate goal. And here again, uh, we have students that are way behind in their math because they fear math, but you've got to embrace math. Okay, you got to take it every semester. And if you can't get in here, get in somewhere else. Okay, uh, for instance, L.A. Harbor starts a week after us, so if you missed a deadline in the fall, go to L.A. Harbor. Um, if, if you can't get in here, go to Santa Monica College or something like that. But you really should be taking math or chemistry every single semester if you're a serious geology or environmental science. It doesn't matter to me. It, it, it just affects you. You're losing about $80,000 a year for every year you spend in college. So I'm talking about for your family. I think they would appreciate it if you got out sooner rather than later. So instead of going, I hate math, I hate math, I hate chemistry, realize this is your ticket to making a huge salary. Okay. And we'll discuss those salaries later on. That's the end of the program. The sixth thing on the advice is the MESA program. Uh, the MESA program is excellent. It's really designed for people in calculus-based sciences, which geology and environmental science is. And so um, take advantage of MESA, or MESA, it's pronounced different ways. It's in the basement of the, the, the um, same building that we're in. And they have excellent tutoring groups, and they got the best facility on camp, brand new. It looks like a hotel down there. So you definitely want to go visit it. And if you're in Chem 4 or above, or Math 170 above, take advantage of their, their specialties and their expertise and, and everything. To join, you need to be in for five hours a week, but during those five hours a week, you can be working on the computer, you could be doing a study group, you could be doing a tutor group. It's not that difficult to put five hours into a program that's there to help you. And it's funded, separate from the college, and it's, it's an awesome program. Okay, something else. Number seven on the master list is to take the field classes. We have a whole series of field classes, and we just call them the Geology 30 series, but it's Geology 30, 32, 34, and 36. There's one every semester, and they're taught by different professors, 
and they have a different course description. So one might specialize in desert uh, processes, another specializes in faulting, another specializes in plate tectonics, and another specializes in, in volcanology and uh, glaciology, and another one specializes in sedimentation. So, and better than that is there are different professors teaching. So you get to know your different professors in a field setting away from the classroom and in real world setting. And these are four day trips. They take place in the middle of a semester because they're eight week classes and they're done halfway through the semester. So most everybody can fit one in because they're over by the time the semester really gets busy and before papers are due and everything like that. So take advantage of these courses. Um, they're designed actually for geology majors. So we, our hope is every geology major takes at least a few, not just one. You don't want to take them with different professors. And uh, different professors stress different things. Like I stress different learning modalities, photography and, and touching and, and analyzing. Um, and Chuck Herzig stresses mineralogy and uh, physical processes, and Sarah De Fiore stresses field studies, keeping a field notebook, etc. Okay. All right, the number eight on our list here is we have a special course we only offer once a year, and it's called GIS. And this is something that looks good on your academic resume, and it's also called Geography 8. And uh, there's, it's a very small class, it's very specialized, and you're basically learning how to do computerized mapping. And since geology, environmental science, and geography are all about mapping, uh, this is great. Uh, they also stress it in biological sciences. And what you're basically doing is overlapping, uh, let's say, a topo map with a map of the rocks, with a map of land use, with a, um, uh, maybe mineral deposits, and it would really help you when doing, let's say, graduate work. Uh, number nine is apply for scholarships. The scholarship office really, really likes science majors. Why? Because you were guaranteed to get jobs. They know that we have the best job potential. And they know that if you're taking chemistry and calculus, that, they, that, they, so that that's very impressive for a scholarship committee. So make sure to apply for scholarships. So write this down. The deadline to apply for the three million dollars worth of scholarships that El Camino gives out every year that is December. It's not in spring. If you don't go on and apply by December, you're not going to get any money from us. Okay? So keep that in mind. And here again, it's another reason to get to know your professors. You might need a letter of recommendation. Um, and so the more you know your professors from field study courses or from classes or maybe the science club, the easier it is to get a letter of recommendation. All right, if you want to transfer to UC, uh, like UCLA or UC Berkeley, San Diego, these are the best universities in the entire West United States, um, the best way to do that is to join the Honors Transfer Program. And I'm the co-director of it, so you can ask me any questions you want. And we've had a few majors in the past uh, be geology majors and in the honors transfer program, and they have gotten in the university of their choice, ones at UCLA right now. And why would you want to go to UC? Because it looks better on the resume, and it helps you get into a better grad school. So be thinking about that. And if you have any, any questions about the honors program, either go over to their office over in counseling or talk to me. For the geology majors, uh, or environmental science, another local resource is the South Bay Lapidaria Mineral Society. It's an organization that meets once a month down in the Torrance Community Center in the library. And they love our majors. They, they know a lot of our, ma our majors, our members, and so consider joining. It's a lot of fun, and especially if you're into rocks and minerals. If you like the hands-on things, and and uh, you like fossils, and you like uh, petrified wood, and 
glow-in-the-dark minerals, uh, then that's where you're going to get that satisfaction. And once a year, in early April, they have a mineral show, and we have a special deal with the South Bay Mineral and Lapidary Society, and that is we ask all of our majors to volunteer there, and it's fun because you're touching minerals and you're helping out and you're learning about all these cool things. And in return, they get to know us, they appreciate us, and they give us scholarship money. They, they have endowed the scholarship, and it now has over $13,000, and all of the profit from that goes to pay for the Wally Ford scholarships. And we give out three every year. So it's a really good deal. We give them labor, they give us money. <laughs> because you guys got the time, and they got the money. Right, so it's, it's a really good deal. And um, my hope is every geology major, every environmental science major, gets one of these scholarships. But there's a catch. You gotta apply for scholarships by December, and you have to volunteer at one of these. Okay? And you have to do well in your, in your classes, your, your geology classes. It's not based on your grades in chemistry or calculus or anything else, just your grades in the earth sciences. For geography majors, there's an organization called the Los Angeles Geographic Society, and they meet in LA, and that looks good on the resume. And they also have a scholarship, but it's, it's given out to the whole county, so it's a lot more competitive than our Wally Ford scholarship. But you definitely want to uh, think in terms about joining the LAGS. And here again, you can ask the professors here, Julian Gard and Matt Ebener, and the adjunct faculty all belong to the LAGS. And they can answer any questions you have. An internship. We don't have a program to get you an internship, but I have handouts here that I do a workshop once a year on finding an internship. But we find that the best internships have been the ones that students have gone out and found. Like I have a former student, a uh, geology major, Reza, who went up and got a job all by himself working for Crater Lake National Park. And he got paid to do this most ultimate job. All he did was talked about the geology of the volcano on the, on the boat, the ship that goes across Crater Lake. And he did it all summer. And it was like the best ever. And you can also work for other national parks like Yosemite. Uh, there's jobs uh, around, um, but you really have to search for them. Uh, the counseling center has a counselor whose expertise is helping you find an internship, but he can't do the specifics. You have to go out and find your own. If you're willing to do an unpaid internship, it's really easy because there's lots of companies in LA here in the environmental cleanup field. There's a few oil companies and a lot of them have an internship program where you just have to apply. You have to be motivated. Very few students actually do this and you have to go out and find the, the company that is willing to give you an unpaid internship. It doesn't have to be done during summer. Um, it's just that's the traditional time for internships. Now, internships are good because there's a statistic that people talk about, like three-fourths of everybody has an internship gets hired eventually with that company. So keep in mind internships as you go through grad school. Or when you get to grad school, keep that in mind. Or maybe between undergrad and grad. There might be a summer there where you think, oh, I don't have to do anything. That might be the perfect time to do internships. I did internships, and it helped me decide where I wanted to go. Sarah did them at, at UCLA. Chuck did them at a university. And I did mine through private companies. So Something else um, before I get into the careers. The, that is, I'm keeping records of everybody. And so if you haven't given me this information, make sure to get, give it to me. I keep a chart and it lets me know where you are in chemistry and math and geology so that I can talk to you one-on-one -on -one during field trips or classes or in the hallway or during workshop and let you know like where you're way behind the curve or where you're way ahead of the curve. So be sure to keep that uh, information current. There's jobs here on campus. Right, we have a tutor position, tutoring for, and it's every year, and 
it's filled um, usually in summertime, but if you're interested in being a teacher, then you should think about tutoring. Yeah. <coughs> Just to add to the tutoring, if you do the formal tutoring, you have to take a six-week course, but you get a certificate which looks good on your resume as well. We also have an SI coach in uh, one geology section, and that is also filled usually in the summer for the school year. There's also grading jobs uh, for some professors, and there's um, unpaid TA positions in a lot of our lab classes. For instance, I need TAs to help teach my Geology 32 and my Geology 3 class. So if you're interested in that, let me know. Because it looks good on your resume and it really allows you to learn the material very well because it's hands-on. And I think you know that you only retain about 20% of what you hear, 20% of what you see, but if you're teaching it, you retain like 90%. Okay? So if you want to do that, let us know. Okay, So that concludes my uh, overview of what uh, being a geology, environmental science, and geography major is like. Um, if you have any more questions, make sure to talk to counselors, research it online, talk to our professors, talk to majors, Join the science club and workshops so that you can talk to other people and find out about professors and jobs and careers and everything.